Hello. Um, wanted to correct something. I would kind of call this some missing information, especially in the Fuji system. Um, the Fuji manual is really, really bad, which most people that love Fuji will admit. Um, about the image stabilization. Um, I ran across this a little while ago in the basement. It was kind of fallen out of the box. Of course, it never should have been out, but here's a, like a 4x5 image that I took of one of my 6.7 uh, Pentax medium format cameras. I took this on my Calumet 4x5, and uh, I've got a lot of 4x5 negatives and chromes in the basement, and uh, you know, these are really beautiful. But the truth is that I can actually extract more information out of a Fuji RAW file on an APS-C. You know, in light of, uh, you know, people talking about sensor size, um, compare 35mm or full frame or FX to this. You know, infinitely small, right? Um, kind of in league of what someone else had mentioned that uh, shooting film back in the days that we're always trying to say, well, you know, if you got a DX, you need an FX. Well... Things have improved. So, you know what it takes to, you know, processing black and white is not that hard, but it's still a pain in the crotch as opposed to sticking an SD card in your computer um, and printing them out and making contact sheets. So, you know, outside of the ginormous pain in the crotch, I mean, I've got more information here than I do here. You know, if I were to blow up a 20 by 30 from this, not only is it a gigantic pain in the crotch, I mean, the, the notion that the APS-C uh, crop sensor is, uh, you know, not good enough is really a load of crap. I mean, it really is. Um, anyway, on IS mode, on uh, the Fuji, uh, one thing that I noticed that even the manual, the, the manual for the Fuji X-T1 and X-T10 are, are just horrible. They're not giving any detailed information. And uh, I'm, uh, you know... Not new, but moderately new to the Fuji system. I've been using it now for, I don't know what, six months or something like that. Anyway, you go to shooting menu 5 and go to IS mode. Um, now, IS mode uh, number 1 is continuous. It means it's always on. It's continuous. Okay. And, of course, obviously that sucks more power. Uh, with number 2, as you uh, depress the shutter release halfway, you take the sh you're take uh, focusing on the shot, you depress it the rest of the way, the image stabilization kicks in. Now, obviously, logically so, the image stabilization kicks in, that's going to jerk the camera, uh, the image a little bit, so that's going to cause uh, an issue, possibly, potentially, um, at speed. Um, I've actually found out that, uh, while, now, number one is default uh, from Fuji, uh, where it's continuous uh, uh, image stabilization. Now, I can hold the camera really, really steady, far steady, more steady than most people can, but I found out that, uh, you know, the book on the Fuji X-T1 written by somebody and the Fuji manual, which doesn't say anything, uh, the manual doesn't say anything, and the book is kind of wrong, and uh, that you should always be on one. I found that even at one one hundredth of a second, that the differences are rather radical. Always keep it on one. I mean, if you're shooting, um, you know, actually above like uh, 100... The 180th of a second or something like that, you stick it in two. Or you can turn it off. I mean, your shutter speed's high enough, but usually I'm not uh, shooting up at those shutter speeds. I'm actually uh, way down there. And uh, I find it incorrect, and the manual, of course, is totally lacking. And that it makes really a world of difference. And that uh, take a shot, you know, handhold at uh, 60 of a second, and 100th, and, you know, 15th of a second. Of course, you'd expect it at 15th. But it's really radically different between uh, image stabilization 1 and image stabilization 2. 1 is continuous, and uh, 2 is only when you uh, depress the uh, shutter release. And uh, it's really rather significant. I mean, completely off is something else altogether. It's just like a regular camera. But uh, anyway, uh, check that out. Take some test shots for yourself. I've done a lot of extensive testing with a lot of different lenses. Um, even the 18 to 55, which uh, I've been told, um, you know, it doesn't drastically, um, you know, change anything, but it does. It really does, even on the 18 to 55. And uh, anyway, so check that out, and you might have had your camera in uh, IS mode number two. Uh, someone probably told you to go there for battery saving. 
which is true, but uh, you probably notice that you have some difficulty hand-holding the shots, and uh, that would be the reason for that. So take a look at that, because there's really very little mention of that. And unlike Nikon, um, it's really rather significant on the Fuji. It's significant not in a bad way, but significant in that there's very little information out there about the iOS mode 1 and 2, and what little information there is is, is somewhat incorrect. So check it out and verify that for yourself, okay? Bye.